I can get through those steps. But you've got a microphone, I was oh my god. Well, I don't need that. Besides, you can hear me in the next block anyway. Uh, my sons are so respectful of me. See, I, yes. Anyway. I, and I stop this just by saying what I have told you in, in once, but is very important to me. And that is that um, as a young woman coming to Portland, I didn't care one bit about who in the Oaks family did what in the old days, because as far as I was concerned, only today mattered. And I didn't take very long before my mother-in-law, my dear mother-in-law, trained me and talked to me, and in some little, lots of insidious little ways, made it appear to me that I really did care, <laughs> and that I really needed to know a lot about this, and gradually trained me to carry on when she was gone. Mm -hmm. And I know that for a fact, and even when she was about to die, she, and you know, we, were, we had lots of intimate little conversations, and she said, now it's all yours now, Yvonne, you've got to take this on. She wasn't an Oaks woman either. She was a married into Oaks, just as I am. Mm -hmm. But I am an Oaks woman, and <laughs> I will die one. I really realize that, and I've come to understand that we have to learn from the past if we're going to do the future right. Mm -hmm. And I fir firmly believe that and told my kids in school that. You, you need to know what people did before you and how that came out if you're going to make good, wise decisions. So anyway, that just tells you why I have all these papers boxes, tons of stuff at home that I am now presently working on because of this wonderful party. I always was going to get to it, but never did. And my kids will tell you that for the last three weeks I've been shoveling this stuff into folders. So I've got that far. Now they're into categories of who people are. And now I have to go through each folder and put together the stories. But they're wonderful stories. And I, I can't tell you all of those tonight by any means, but I just want to tell you that I am working on that, and uh, and I I am very impressed that we have a lot to live up to. It's amazing. I, and I just tell you briefly, that, and I know some of you know the story, some of you don't, that there were two boys out of a big family in England that had no money, and they hitched a ride on a boat and came over as indentured servants, and as these two men as indentured servants got here, they earned their way out of that. And within a few years, they both got through Harvard, and one of them had become the president and of Harvard and died after about, or got sick and had to resign after a year. The wait, other, wait, wait, excuse me. The indentured servant became the president of that's Harvard? That's exactly right. Wow. What is and Harvard apparently was... Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. somebody got a TV on it? Yeah, it's it's a computer. Computer. So can just tell them to turn it down? Or just close yeah, their door. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I don't ask them to come down here. Then. You have competition. We're having a little trouble because I don't have a computer around here. Yeah. I speak loudly, though, don't I? You can we can, yeah, we we can hear you just fine. We're on a concentrate. Okay, then I'm just going to go down the line just a little bit that the, the these two boys, one of them, as I say, stayed in Massachusetts. And the other one, Thomas, had 24 kids by two wives, and he came up to the son. His son, John, came up to Yarmouth, which is right outside of Portland, where I live. I go there a lot. And uh, he came up there and established a home. Married a girl named Susanna, and we have a couple of um, silhouettes of John and, and Susanna on the wall at home, and they're just little tiny. Uh, Apparently, that's something everybody did in those days, made these little silhouettes. And they uh, eventually moved to a little town called Temple. I'm telling you this because Temple is in central Maine, and you'd never know it was there now. It's a little tiny place with an uh, old schoolhouse in it and lots of cemeteries and lots of names of oaks on the stones. But one of these people that came in this situation was Dr. Sylvester Oaks. And Dr. Sylvester Oaks lived in that area. He um, became a very prominent man in Maine. 
and he uh, was he was in a lot of real estate deals. He bought and sold stuff all over the place. What I have from him is a lot of uh, I paid you so much for this, and you paid me so much for that. But that was only a sideline. He was the most prominent physician in that area, and eventually uh, he established. With a couple of other doctors, the Central Maine Hospital, which is now the biggest hospital in Maine, except for the ones in Portland. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, he had apparently some free time because he dealt with Abraham Lincoln, who appointed him to be the, the postmaster general for that area of Maine. Now, I mean, I don't know how anybody does all those things at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> but he did. And in the meantime, had three kids. Oh. And these three kids, oh, yeah. I told one of you about this. I, I can't, can't don't have time to tell you that story, but you can ask me and I'll tell you. Anyway, he, t he sent a letter to his wife telling about his early experiences med in medicine and it would curl your hair. You'd die. Anyway, he had three children. One of them was Wallace, and Wallace became a doctor too. And Wallace uh, was a successful physician. He was the father of a little girl named Methyl. And Methyl was, became a, uh, and I can't tell you what it was in, but a, an Olympics champ in, in around Boston. And he had a son who became a New York financier. And <clears throat> I don't know any more about them from that point on. I have no other information about them. And he was also uh, the father of uh, Auntie Belle that Grandpa Granville used to talk about a lot. Granville would say when he was in Auburn visiting his grandparents that he would go and see Auntie Belle. And so Auntie Belle uh, was another one of those children. And the third one was Henry. And Henry was the one that we know the most about because Henry was my children's great-grandfather. So for you that are younger than my children, you would be your great-great-grandfather. Mm -hmm. Or the younger your generation yet would oh, be your great-great-great-grandfather. <laughs> Henry uh, was a lawyer who was very important in, in uh, the town of, of uh, Auburn, which is the, where Bates College is in, in Maine. And he was uh, on the board of Bates College, and there was a lot of correspondence there. He was very helpful in keeping that college alive. And together with that, he did many uh, things in the state of Maine and uh, law department that were important. And uh, Henry needed a wife, and he was doing this when he was very young. And he went to um, a town called Phillips. Now, Phillips is up near Rangeley, a really tiny little, well, anyone would call Hickey Town. It was a kind of a, a little bubble in the landscape up there. And there were lots of people with a name, with their name up there. And Toothacre was the name. We, my kids used to laugh at that name, Toothacre. But they even have a, uh, in the town, right outside of Phillips, they have a museum of all the Toothacres. And these are things you can do. That's why, <laughs> as the young people, you can go to a museum that's about the Toothacres. And there are all kinds of stuff in it. It's only open a couple days a week, something <laughs> like that. But it's available. And also, I wanted to say, if you up that way, that you should go to Temple, because Temple is a darling little town, and the postmistress there was willing to give me the names of all kinds of people that could tell you things. But there were oaks buried in three different cemeteries up there, all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I never even heard of that from folks, but I, I now know that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Henry fell in love with the druggist's daughter in Phillips and her name was Thaley. And Thaley uh, Raymond Toothacre uh, was the daughter of Henry. Her middle name was Raymond. Uh, was her middle name? Her middle name was, yeah. And, and Thaley Raymond. was the daughter of Raymond and Eliza Church. So I gotta show you about this. Eliza, Eliza Church was a descendant of this uh, major church who was very well known as in historical circumstances up there in Maine because he was there during the French and Indian War. And when I was a bride, we'd go down, right down through Deering Oaks, and many of you know where that is. It's a park in the center of Portland. And there used to be a big tree, and it had a 
a stone uh, plate, plate on it that said, here's where Major Church died in the Battle of the French and Indian War. And then I, so I was telling Eric about that. They took down the tree, so they moved the uh, plaque. And Eric called them and got in touch with them and tried to find out what he could. And he gave me this. And here's a picture of the plaque. It's now in this building. And in Deering Oaks is a little duck pond. And this is the little house that carries supplies for people in the park who can go anytime. So this placement here says, here the brave followers of Major Church died in battle with the Indians in September 28, 1680. And, and this little caption says, would you like a glass of wine? And there's a picture, a portrait of Mr. Church. In the early light of September 28, 1689, Captain Anthony Brackett observed scores of canoes sweeping across Back Cove toward his farm in tiny Falmouth. Portland used to be called Falmouth. Uh, now Portland, and so began the Battle of Deering Oaks, the largest battle between Indians and settlers ever fought on Maine soil. About 400 Indians and French officers fought Major ben Benjamin Church's force of 200 Massachusetts volunteers from sunrise to sunset when the Indians finally withdrew. So this is that interesting mm -hmm. to know. So I have that, and thanks to Eric, I he put the snapshots in these, and I. So I Do you have, have any that. idea why they na gave their daughter the middle name Raymond? <laughs> right? <laughs> is that who my name came from? I think it was a last name. It, Bob thinks it, it was. I don't know. I think Jacob has okay. traced the name Raymond. I, I don't know. I think it may have been. I don't know what I think. Raymond's been passed, 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 passed down a while. Bob, what I'm th I've been thinking about that. She was an only okay. child. Her father's name was Raymond. And I have a feeling they named it. In which case, it wouldn't have been a last name. I have a feeling they use that name. Well, now, to go on further to this same family. So, and if it's using the father was Wallace? No, this is the, the lady side of the family. No. Wallace uh, was uh, the son of, the doctor son of, uh, what I just said, time. Sylvester, so so thank you. But no, now we're getting to Henry Oaks, Betsy. Okay. This is Henry Oaks's girlfriend. He was working up there, and he fell in love with Bailey. Yeah. And he didn't have much money. Oh, okay. And this was in, guess what, about 1849. Mm -hmm. What do you think happened in that year? Mm -hmm. The gold rush. Mm -hmm. The 49. He wanted to earn some money. His father-in-law was, this Raymond Toothache, was quite a guy. He uh, was very intelligent. Well, it, and had good business, but he wanted his daughter to have things right. So Henry and Raymond went on the gold rush. And he was going to California so he could bring home enough money so he could properly propose to Thaler. I have here, and I'm going to read it to you. I hope it doesn't take too long. But this is R.S. Oaks. R.S. Oaks High School uh, Exam, a story of Raymond Toothacre, the 49er, for the gold fields as told by R.T., Raymond Toothacre, to R.S.O., Raymond Sylvester Oaks. Hmm. So this is Grandpa Oaks' writing about Henry's uh, father-in-law and, and his trip, Henry and, and Raymond Toothacre's trip to the Goldfield. Elizabeth's husband. Raymond. Yeah, the, the writing is is Elizabeth's husband, Raymond. Yeah. My yeah, grandpa. Oh, grandpa. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 in high school. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. 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 They both yeah. named Raymond, so that's a little confusing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's his high school paper, Grandpa Oaks, his high school paper about Raymond Tuzaka. And, who went to get gold and so Henry Oaks the when they went to get money to, okay. to pay him to marry Thaler. He was back in there grabbing gold for girls. <laughs> Started yeah, a right, long right. time ago. In 1847, a man by the name of John A. Sutter decided upon the construction of a sawmill on a small mountain stream in California 
an employed and honest, skillful, it looks like cranky man, I think that's what it is, it must be a title, cranky man, by the name of Marshall to do the job. Uh, one day, when the will was nearly completed, Marshall was walking down the trail, tail race and saw some yellow particles mixed with, with the gravel. He showed them to Sutter, and the test proved the particles to be gold. The news spread like wildfire and made the whole country crazy. In 1849, about 50,000 men went across to California from the Atlantic states. I was 21 years old at that time. This is Raymond speaking. Now this is Raymond, no, uh, this is Henry speaking. Henry speaking. I was 21 years old, because it's got quotes, at that time, a New England country lad, but as ambitious as any city boy in the world. By 1851, I had scraped together about $300, which I thought would suffice for my transportation, and one day I set out for New York. In company with my future father-in-law, here we boarded the steamer Prometheus for Panama. After we had crossed the isthmus, you know that there was no canal, mm -hmm. they walked. After he had, we had crossed the isthmus, uh, on, oh, on muleback, on muleback, we waited some time for the steamer North America, in which, finally, about 1,500 embarked for San Francisco. But by some unknown means, our boat was wrecked about 100 miles east of Acapulco. All got ashore, however, and after a great amount of suffering, especially among the women, we managed to get to Acapulco. Here, there's a lot of cross out here. Here, all the native natives were foreigners, and money and money was scarce, and the rations were uh, poor. Like the teacher made a lot of mockery plots on this. <laughs> <laughs> many, many suffered from the effects of the climate. After we had waited here three weeks under these conditions, an old schooner named the Thomas came in ready to take as many as she had room for. Her captain said he would make the trip in 15 days and that her provisions were, comp were ample. He even went as so far as to show us a sample of a supply. It was a kind of hard, sweet pastry called Acapulco bread. We knew it was not very good, but in our desperation, about 250 of us, thinking we could stand it for 15 days, took the captain at his word and charted the ship. We had been deceived all around. Our trip of 15 days was extended to 63. But uh, all that had been said about provisions was a complete fake. When we had been out of the harbor three days, the Acapulco bread gave out, and we were put on short rations. And worse than that, all these rations consisted of some old crackers of such nature that if you should take one in your hand and tap on it, a dozen to 15 worms would immediately crawl out. Often have I broken up my crackers in my coffee, as they called it, and skinned the worms off the top. At first, I, at first I refused this stuff in scorn, but soon hunger did the deed, and I was ready to eat all I could get. But in a week, even this was gone. So we made a little port called Ma Manzanilla, Manzanilla where we got water, but no food, except about 20 bushels of old moth-eaten corn. This, a spoonful a day of this, which each man received, probably saved our lives, for instead of striking winds, as we had hoped to after leaving Manzanilla, we simply drifted out of the course of ships, and for 40 days, not a breeze shook the sail, and 250 once vigorous, rough, hardy, now half-starved, homesick men, lounging about on the deck, rose and sank with the swell of the sea, without seeing the slightest sign of another ship. Too sick to read, too weak to play games, 
too tired to talk, everyone thinking of his stomach and hoping to sight a sail or feel a breeze. Of course, the sailors had to have better food in order to be able to do their work. So there were a few here on board for their use. Now, none of, of this corn we had was really fit for a horse, but by, oh, by dint of steaming and preparing, we got it so that at, a, at the point of necessity, most of it could be eaten. But of course, some of the kernels were, uh, were condemned as positively useless and given to the, to the hens. But many a time have I walked into the hen house and stolen these kernels to eat myself. As idle as a painted ship upon a painted ocean from the ancient mariner would be a very apt description of our condition. But another quotation from the same poem water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink, would, be, would not be out of place. For one day, a man, we called him Powderhorn, got so desperate that he drank about a quart of the straight ocean water. He didn't die, but no one could ever understand just why he didn't. One day, there was a great excitement on board about Noon, we began to feel a little breeze, and almost simultaneously, a sail was sighted. We immediately hoisted signals of distress, but it was night before we got near the, the other ship. By that time, such a sea had come on that it was impossible to speak with them. But the next morning, we found that they were in almost the same plight as we. They said, we can't help you now, but if you will stay by us, and worse comes to worse, we will divide. There was a good breeze blowing, so after some time, our council decided that as our boat was a faster sailor than theirs, we had better leave them and push on. So we soon arrived in San Francisco, and when the harbor pilot came on board, we had positively no bread and only one small cask of water as supplies for 250 hot stock men. When I got ashore, I could hardly walk, but I was allowed to keep eating a little at, time, at a time during the day. At night, I had a rousing big supper, and I felt happy, and thought I never would be hungry again. And after supper, we started up the Sacramento River on a, stream, on a steamboat, but before I had been out an hour, I thought I was starving to death already. We arrived at Sacramento the next morning, and from there, took another boat to Marysville. We stopped here a day or two and then set out for the mines. Is that, oh, wow. isn't, that oh. isn't that a wonderful story? And now I'm going to tell you about the rest of it. Can I ask real quick? So, so that's Raymond? Yep. Ar Ar that's, no, that's not Raymond. That's Raymond Toothache and so Henry Oaks. That's but his, our grandfather talked and writing. Yeah, your yeah. grandfather wrote that right. in high school. About his his father and yes, his father. about his father and, and his, father. his, fa and his oh, father's cool. wife's father. Yes. So our great grandfather. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And great great grandfather. Yeah. No. And this is what I have yeah. that I need to show you. Some of you have seen these, but I bet most of you haven't. I have in this little box. <laughs> yeah. I have some ore with real gold in it. They actually found gold. They, oh, they did? And I have to tell you, sadly, they found gold, and they did bring home some, enough to be pleased with that, but they didn't take it all. They invested it out there in California and lost it. Oh. Oh. There was a lot of cheats out there. Gave right. it, you know, but nonetheless, they made it back home, and um, he had a uh, Raymond toothache added to his... Uh, drugstore, and, and uh, Henry had enough money to propose to his girlfriend, uh, Thaley, and then, out of a uh, sense of largesse, Father Raymond Toothacre and Thaley built a house, the big Court Street house, for Henry and Thaley to live in and promptly moved in themselves, <laughs> and they lived together the rest of their lives. 
We want to see the gold. <laughs> yeah, I know we do. And there's a little how many pieces you have? I used, to yeah. <laughs> I used to take it to school with me and pass it out to people, we, we to the kids, and why they were. <laughs> there, there, there's several pieces. Here. One looks like a, a little horse, and they put a pin on the back. And then there's a gold coin, and there's another two little gold nuggets in here. And this is a stone with gold in it. So I can pass it up. These are the graduating cards from Phillips High School. It's kind of interesting, so you can look at those. Here, I'll just give you these to pass up. I have a few other things that came from the gold rush that you should see. My, all my elementary school kids have seen these things. So Sutter became, um, I don't know that much about Sutter, except they know that Sutter Healthcare is a huge, huge healthcare system. Is that right? In California. Yeah, yeah probably yeah. something. And they took care of my dad and, um, oh, yeah, in Sacramento, they have a Isn't big, that cool? yeah, a few hospitals up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Raymond Tuvega made this box. He also made the chest that much of the stuff is in. Look at oh, this. This, and this, it writes on everything, a little pat, 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 paragraph here, this mm. is made by Raymond Toothaker out of what he made it out of them. You know, so. Here's a, the thing to put the gold in, right, wore around the waist, it's made of leather. Here is the all-purpose Scarves. Make sure there's no gold here. <laughs> you know, silver, and it's got holes in it, but it's what he took. Huh. Oh my gosh. And here is, wait, wait, in a letter, wait, he writes Just that he bought it. this. It's oh a gosh. Napoleon uh, pipe, <laughs> and he bought it as a uh, um, souvenir in California. And brought it back. It's a little piece of, it looks like a piece of bamboo with right. it, and this little yeah, pottery it. head. Yeah. And here is his shaving brush. <laughs> oh, uh, and there's a, I don't know, it looks like an automatic pencil or something. I'll put out, uh, just give you that to look at. That's all So I just knew that if you hadn't heard the story, that you would love it. Yeah. I have some pictures, yeah. and uh, this picture, these two pictures, have in them. Thaley, Thaley and uh, in the back row is Thaley and Henry. In front of them is Raymond Toothaker and Eliza. Over here is Grandpa Raymond, and here is ba young Wallace that died at age 21. <laughs> but that's the, a family portrait you can see. This one is a little a later, and it has Henry and Dorothy and Granville and Bob and Thaley and Henry and Raymond and Elizabeth and Helen and, uh, okay, tell me, I know, <coughs> Marilyn, the baby Marilyn. Okay. okay, so that's the kids. This is the, uh, you know, okay. my generation, my generation, and your father and stuff, and here are the father and mother in the front. Yeah. So you can see those two. Those two are not so giving away. So our grandfather was the son of the family and family. Yeah. No, yeah. Your grandfather and <laughs> this Wallace that died were their only two children. Oh, I see. They have I have a little which, picture. Which one of these two is, is Thaley? The top or the bottom? Oh, the top one. Oh, okay. The bottom one is the, the two, two figures. Is that her mom? Is that her mom? Yeah. I'm wondering, was this, did they hide, <laughs> did this go under their clothes to hide I their don't clothes? know how they wore it, but it's <laughs> obvious that that's what it's for. It looks like a, like a money belt. It's like a money belt. Under your shirt. So I imagine so, and they, they probably, gold, they put yeah. the gold nuggets in that as on the field. I I'm feel quite sure of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see the resemblance, right? Yeah. 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 Wow, look at this one. I have a, holy cow. I have oh, some I images. I think it's going that way. Oh, you know what? I forgot to bring in. I'll bring it in tomorrow. I have one small oil painting 
that I brought up that Grandma Oaks did that I like, and I thought maybe some of the young people don't have one, and maybe we could put your name in a hat and we could draw it so somebody could take it home. Would you like that? I have it in the car. It's an apple tree, an apple, and it's pretty. Okay. And I have these. There's some pictures here that I thought you might like. That's a picture of Raymond. Here is a picture of Raymond. Raymond. I didn't say anything about this, but I should now, I guess. Raymond Oaks, your grandfather, was instrumental in establishing the first a uh, branch college of the University of Maine in Portland. He was a, a powerhouse in doing that. He was a, a part of the board of a school called Portland Junior College, and he with uh, a couple of other friends were the power behind the first branch of the University of Maine outside of r &O where it started. And now there must be seven or eight, seven or eight branches all over the state. So he accomplished so much in his life, besides doing a lot of work on the court system. And I just thought you'd like to see, I have that picture, and I like this. Look at this. Is that good? Oaks and Seals what? Davidson Yeah. Somebody was ousted from his job, and Raymond said that was not fair. This is 1934. And yeah, there's the painting. So who, you, who painted that? No, my uh, mother, uh, Grandma Oaks, Grandma my Oaks. my mother-in-law. Yeah. 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 You can just put it in later. Well, that that would be our great grandmother. Yes. For yes. our generation. Yeah. 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 It would this be a great. Is, this is our great grandmother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's gorgeous, though. God. She was very talented. I have two uh, articles where she won uh, the uh, oh. first prize in the county fairs with her painting. I bet she did. And that was, she was a Sunday painter, you know, that's something she just did. Mm -hmm. Talented. We used to go to her, we used to go to their house. When this Has gets, anyone when this gets to you? Mm -hmm. This is, this is my And not, is really? not only that, when, when I, I should tell you okay. that uh, besides Dad's work in the, in the legal system and Portland <laughs> Junior College and other things, many things he did, Elizabeth, you know, the grandmother, my, my mother-in-law, was the pre was the president of the Portland School Board for several years. She was uh, every place she went, she was chairman. She was president of her graduating class at college. She was head of the uh, overall committee at Woodlands Church when it had 2,000 members. She was pre president of the B a band association, and she did all this without ever looking like she did anything outside the house. She was Didn't she do something with painting too? Wasn't she? She was in a painting club, but wasn't oh, she? Oh yes, and she won lots of. No, but I mean, wasn't she in in charge of something or? Something? No, she just went to those. She was in the women's union, but and, and then so I thought you might like to see this. Mm. So your even your grandparents really did a very remarkable things. Mm -hmm. They were and very unshowy. They were not. Uh, they were humble about it. Yeah, uh, they, they, it was a matter of course. That's what one did with one's life. Right. I have a few here. I want to send it. While um, while uh, uh, mother and dad were in Washington, because mother uh, mother Oaks uh, Elizabeth Oaks Grandma Oaks, uh, her mother ran a boarding house in Washington D.C. Grandpa went down there in the service. And uh, he stayed at her boarding house, and he had he had only been married a short time, and his wife died in childbirth, and he was down in Washington, and he stayed at this rooming house that Grandma Oaks' mother had, and they met there, and in a short time, they were married, and so she came back up to Maine. That's how they got together. But here's a picture. Of Do you know who took care of him? Yes, the grandma, grandma uh, Thaley. Mm -hmm. Thaley and Henry took care of Henry. Mm -hmm. I have some little pictures here I showed to some of you. While they were in Washington was the big time of women's suffrages, and, and they, there's the big parade. I've got some pictures of the big parade with, for uh, women's suffrage action, and apparently it was huge. Do and you know where, where our grandfather right, stood on the... Oh yeah, I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was for that. 
And this is a picture, I'll send it to, of them sitting on the front steps of the house in Washington where he lived. And then I've got a picture here. This is in Washington. I've got a little picture here of Grandma Thaley and Auntie Bell and Bob's mother, I mean, Grandma, Grandma Oaks. And in front of Grandma Oaks, I think, is little Henry. You can see those. And I think, I was going to give this to somebody that would, I think this is Grandma with Stacia. Let me see, I can tell you. And I thought so maybe somebody would like to give it to her. I don't think so. Yep, it is. I think it looks like Stacia to me. Mm -hmm. I yep, have, that's Grammy with Stacia. We see that. I have this picture to give away. This is Mother's school board picture. I have this to give away if somebody wants it. I have some of this stuff I need because I'm going to put it in my room. I, I have this picture of Raymond. You can have, if anybody wants either of these, this is Mother and this is Dad. And you, you can have those if you don't have such things in your house and want it. I have a few more. I think so. I think I know where it was. Is it in Connecticut? No, it would be in Maine. All the pictures in Maine, yeah. She always lived there. I lived with after she went moved from Washington. She lived in Maine. Um, where in Maine? What's the origin? Around, uh, well, uh, around Portland, also in Portland. So this is this is Grandpa Henry. I can give I can give somebody that if somebody would like Grandpa Henry. What's the origin of Ashland? Elizabeth Ashland Oaks. Oaks. I thought it was Ashland. No, Ashland. Oh, what's the origin of the Ashland? What's his name? This is a picture of Grandma. Uh, you can have these. Some I can give you because I have duplicates. And if you, anyone would like them, there's another one of Raymond. You can have them. I'll just put them someplace, and you can just pick them up. I have one more thing. Do you want to? You can just take one of those and keep it. The others I want back because I'm going to use them in my story. I have to find that. I have to find that. Uh, just hang on. I have something I've got to read to you because I thought it was so funny I fell down laughing. Here it is. Oh, maybe, maybe this you that should have it here. I think we should have all of them. I don't like that. Uh, yeah, I have your attention. Uh, in class, I would go like this. I just have to read you one more thing and I'm done. Where's my glasses? I don't know uh, for sure what all of your political opinions are. And uh, you don't need to own up to them. But I can tell you that at the time that all these people were alive, there was nothing but the Republican Party in the state of Maine. And they were all tried and true Republican Party, uh, tried and true Republicans. Raymond went to the National Convention in, Sa in San Francisco as a delegate. And he ran for Congress, and I have things about his running for Congress. They were close friends of Margaret Chase Smith. They were very interested in Republican politics. But somebody wrote this poem, who must have been a Republican, but I, what amused me the most about this poem is it could have been written today on the other side. You well, know? I think the, the Democrats today are the way the Republicans And this is yeah. just yeah. like that, Betsy. Yeah. When you hear this, yeah. Yeah. this is what this, this person says. It's called Democratic Dialogue. Father, must I go to work? No, my lucky son, we're living now on Easy Street, on Doe from Washington. We've left it up to Uncle Sam, so don't get exercised. Nobody has to give a damn. We've all been subsidized. But if Uncle Sam treats us all so well and feeds us milk and honey, please, Daddy, tell me what the hell he's going to use for money. Don't worry, but there's not a hitch in this here noble plan. He simply soaks the filthy rich and helps the common man. But Father, won't there come a time when they run out of cash and we here left them not a dime when, when things will go to smash? My faith in you is shrinking, son, you nasty little brat. You do too much damn thinking, son, to be a Democrat. Mm. <laughs> Just exactly. Wow. 
exactly the opposite of what people are saying right. now. Isn't that funny? The shoe is on the other foot. Oh, who wrote that? I have no idea. It says here, excerpt from the congressional record. Mm. Mm. Wow. Oh, somebody read that in the... In a congress... That's great. That is Isn't that a wonderful... I wish they do it I now and just swap the foot. <laughs> I love so on that because everything about it, it's the way it's plugged in. Yeah. Mm. If, if we can pass this forward, can you identify the back row one more time? Yeah. There. Sure. That's the box. Oh. I, I know uh, Grandpa, Raymond Sylvester, is in the back right corner. Yeah. 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 It's Henry and Stalia in the front. No, no. That's Raymond Tufeka and Eliza Tufeka. Oh, okay. So is, in the that's Bailey and Henry. Oh, okay. That's Raymond and that's Wallace that died. That's the younger brother of Raymond. So this is their family as lived in Court Street Church, uh, Court Street uh, House. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So we have three. a lot of Raymonds and Bailey. That's and three generations. And, and how many That's people have Raymond in their right. name still? Because I'm not the only one with Raymond in my middle name. Yeah. You? You're Raymond too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we both have Raymond. Okay. Which one is? I have Raymond in my middle name. Yeah. I know why you take was too yeah, much time. Yeah. But Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. I thank you. Did you see you. the paper around with all the, the names? I need to see. Well, the family tree, I saw that. With the, the, with the family names. Right. No, all the Raymonds. I no, I've not. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, that one you'd be interested in. I'd love to see how many Raymonds we're working with. Can you bring that shell? Are you on there, Albert? I am. Yes, she is. Are you all done, Amy? I am. Okay. Huh? Yeah. That's Elizabeth. Oh, it is. Okay. It's her picture for the when she was on the school board. Oh. You can I you can have it. I would not thank you, Avon, for sharing all this information. Oh. I thank you really for letting me really I had cool. to do this once. I just had to do this. <laughs> and I, when I get much more work done, I hope in some way I'll be able to share it with you. But I just so much want you to know because the more I read about the the, the family, the more I thought we have a lot to live up to. And I think we, when we think about all the social service work that's happening in this household tonight, I think we're doing all right. Sunday when I was over there eating lunch. Is that how colors came about with the paint brushes? When you you V made a song with colors, it was like yellow is the color of my mother's paint brush. Is that what you said? That I said that man, so, when you're so song at so my mother's funeral. Right. And it was patterned after the song that we sang that today. I realize now. Yeah. So it was about the paint brush. The song Colors by Donovan. I used that. And you song about mom. Such an incredible job that Bob. I remember. I haven't heard about that in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
chest I had it's what was full of a lot of these things. He writes in that what he made it out of, what time he made it, and all this yeah. country man. I don't know it's amazing how they had time in those days to do so much. I don't know how it, because it must have taken more time for household chores and all those things. I don't know what they did. <laughs> they didn't but have I know cell they phones. Didn't. Someone couldn't call them and say, we need you here. Exactly. They, they didn't have cell phones. They, they didn't, didn't have, have telephones. Anything else. And, but they the would stop their telephone. work instantly if a company came. Right. And make them feel at home and feed them. I spent a lot of time at Old Sturbridge Village, which was 1830s okay. in Massachusetts. And that's the things that I learned about life at that time, because we worked with all materials that were uh, right back then, not written about it, mm -hmm. but by the people. And they, and even I notice I have the diaries for Henry, and they'll say so and so came for supper, or so and so came this afternoon, and the rest of the time it'll be sunny today, rain tomorrow, or rain. Yeah, it, year after year after year after year. Of these diaries. And there must be thirty of these late, late diaries. And one, and one, and one page will say Thaley's birthday, <laughs> or, or something like that. I'm in town today. <laughs> It's their version of the Facebook. It's exactly their version of Facebook. They were posting what they did that day. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's part of it. I think another part of it is they didn't do what they, their uh, pleasure was what you kids do. They would meet someplace and sing on a corner somewhere or play something if they had an instrument. That would be a big deal. Or they would have uh, supper with people. But they didn't go to amusement parks. They didn't go to movies. They didn't go to formal concerts. Most of these people, they were out in the country. So they didn't have uh, that kind of competition. And even school was uh, less time consuming. And seasonal. If it was busy, busy right. farm time, they didn't go to school. Well, they were expected to work on the farm. That's right. For a long time, Maine in the upper part of Maine cut closed school for several weeks in the fall because it was potato time. For the harvesting season? Oh, there you go, wow. Oh, You just got amped up. Any, and look, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll try to look them up for you. If you, you know, if somebody really wants to know about Cindy something. was just asking that did we make some uh, copies of the um, of the high school paper there. Yeah, it, it's marked uh, all over with pen, uh, colored pencils. Where the teacher can actually go scan it. You have it. You could actually do that now. Yeah. Who is this? That's Elizabeth. That's Grandma. That's Grandma. When, she, when she was on the school board. That's her professional picture. Wow. I mean, she was some lady. I wouldn't even recognize her. No, I don't. And I need to and tell you. Song in your no. 
you know, when she when she was training me, when Elizabeth was training me, she told me that when my husband came home, I should go before he got there and get out of my house clothes and put on some decent clothes and, and be ready to meet him at the door. And that's what she did with Raymond. She got dressed up when he came home. She had supper ready. They had supper. And the rest of the night, she did nothing of her own. She followed him. If he went to the work book, she sat at workbench. She sat down there and read or sewed or something while he worked or wherever he was. She was by his side, like she had nothing better to do. Yeah. In there, it was in there. 